HSM, how you doing out there? This is Scott Rubin coming to you on location for our series called Marked. We're in week three, and if you remember last week, Christian and I were trying to think, where's a location that we can go and shoot that makes us think of the word marked? So we read online about this really cool old abandoned building, a lot of graffiti, a lot of marks that kind of like made our mind think about this. And we got out there and the building was demolished. It was torn down. So we did our homework and this week we came to another location that kind of makes us think about marks. So here we are and it's all to get us thinking about what are the things that happen in our lives that affect us. Now, two weeks ago, if you were together tonight, we talked about a comparison, a mark that you're born with. And marks that you're born with are things that God put into your life on purpose, that he designed about you on purpose. We use the metaphor of a birthmark, kind of the comparison of birthmarks, not physical birthmarks, but marks in your life that God put there. Last week, we kind of changed it up a little bit, and we said, let's talk about marks that are caused by choices that we make in our lives. And we used another comparison. We said, let's compare this to a tattoo, because hopefully, if you have a tattoo or if you get a tattoo, it's one that you choose, not that somebody chooses for you. And tattoos can be great choices or maybe not so great choices. But this week, we're going one step further. And we're talking about marks that you don't choose, marks that come into your life, that affect your life, but maybe they're not ones that you necessarily chose. And the metaphor that we're using this week, the comparison that we're making, is the comparison of a scar. Scars leave a mark, but they're not always marks that you would choose necessarily. And so when we talk about that this week, last week we showed some tattoos, because tattoos are cool and you can look at those. I was gonna show you some pictures of scars, but ones that I looked at, especially the fresh ones, they'd probably make you throw up. So we decided not to do that. Instead, I wanna show you a scar that's a little bit more healed up and have you think about the mark that happens when a scar comes into your life. Now, a lot of times when you talk about scars, it can turn into like a spontaneous show and tell. So for about a minute here, if you have a scar that's in a PG place, not on your butt, not somewhere inappropriate, but you can show someone next to you, or if you know of somebody who's got a cool scar or you've ever seen a cool scar, tell the person next to you about that, and then we'll come back. Okay, come on back here, come on back here, come on back here. Hey, I wanna apologize if someone just totally grossed you out talking about their scar. But I also wanna make two quick observations that I think are really appropriate in this moment. And one is, most scars come with a story. Now, someone might've just told you a, score, a story about a scar that they've got because it reminded them of a situation of when that thing happened to them. Um, in my own life, I've got my own scars, but I have three kids and my oldest seems to be kind of like the scar king. Um, I remember one time he was reaching up to get something off of the wall and he's holding his hands against the wall. What he did not know is that there was a nail sticking out of the wall. So as he runs his hands up the wall and he's jumping, a nail gouges him right in the webbing of his hands. Big gash, we had to bring him to the hospital, stitches, scar, the whole thing. When he was a little guy, maybe five years old, we were at a playground and he was going down a slide, and why this slide was made out of wood, I will never know. But he's going down this slide and he gets a big old sliver in his butt. We had to get out the tweezers, took about a half an hour, he's screaming the whole time. That left a mark, that left a scar. Last one's a little bit more serious than that. When he was just a newborn boy, just the day after he's got born, the doctor comes into the room that we're in and says to my wife and I, We've detected some kind of a mass in his abdomen. We don't know what it is, but we're gonna have to do surgery. Oh, we were scared. We prayed, we asked our friends to pray. We said, God, can you, how, this is our, our little newborn boy. 
They took him into surgery. They made a big old incision and it left a mark. It left a scar. Now the good news is he's fine. Like he grew out of that and he's all good. But the scar is still something you can see to this day. And when he's got his shirt off and I look at his, at his back, I look at that scar and I'm thankful for what God did through that. That was a story of a scar gone right and good things that happened. Now you remember I said, I want to make two observations about scars. Here's the second one. A lot of time, a scar will bring pain when it comes. And remember, this is a metaphor. We're not just talking about physical scars. We're talking about emotional scars as well. You may have had a situation that left a mark on your heart. Some pain got brought into your life and you feel like it wasn't a physical scar that you had, but it was an emotional scar. And I just wanna be clear, pain comes into our lives. If you've experienced pain, you're not weird, you're not crazy, and you're not alone. Pain comes to us and sometimes it leaves a mark. But here's the key question. When pain comes into your life, what do you do with it? How do you respond? In the minutes that we have left, we don't have time to hit the idea of pain from all angles. And I don't want to treat this superficially, you guys. I don't want to pretend that there are simple answers for complex things. This is a pretty deep topic, and I'm hoping that you're gonna dig into it in your small group conversations. That's why we do those things. Now, some people ask, if God's so good, why does he even allow pain in the world? But so often, pain comes from human choices. Not all the time, but a lot of times. I just wanna be clear, God doesn't cause pain. And even in the pain that we can't explain, he does promise that he's gonna help us through it. Listen to what's recorded in the book of Psalms in the Bible. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those who are crushed in spirit. God does not forget people who are in pain. He's close by. He's closer than we realize sometimes. And God says, you are not alone in your pain. Now real quick, I wanna suggest three things that I've been learning about pain and even relearning about pain as I've had my own pain in the last couple of years. And there's an I in each one of these, and I didn't do that on purpose, but the first one is this. Identify the cause of the pain. That's our job is to identify where the pain is coming from, the real cause. Now sometimes there's like a smoke screen cause, but there's actually something more behind it. Like maybe I feel tension in my house because I feel like my mom's being a jerk. Or could it actually be sadness because my parents split up? Or maybe I'm feeling super angry because my grades aren't what I wanted to be. But it could actually be the pain of fear because the pressure of college expectations or, or maybe something else. But identifying the cause of pain is gonna be a huge step in helping you and me cope with it. So that's the first I, identify. The second I is actually what not to do. Don't isolate. You and I have to move towards people not away from people. And it's interesting because our gut reaction is sometimes often to do the opposite, is to isolate, be by myself, disconnect, insulate myself from other people. And yep, sometimes you need to be alone. Sometimes I need to be alone. But God made us for community, you guys. God made us to need relationships, to bear each other's burdens, the Bible says. Don't believe the lie that you need to handle your pain all by yourself. Tough people handle their own pain. That's baloney. That's just baloney. And speaking of that, there's one more I. Invite God in to help you handle it. You guys, one of the things that you can do to deal with pain is just say, God, I'm in pain. I need you. I need your help in this. I need to not do this on my own and invite God into this so that he can be a part of your solution as well. Now, one last thing, and I couldn't think of a way to have this one start with the letter I, but number four is to realize that your pain won't last forever. It won't last forever no matter how bad the pain is right now. Think about this. God promises a day where you and I won't experience pain anymore. My mom died this last summer. It was honestly a kind of pain I've never felt before. Maybe you've lost somebody close to you. This was my mom. She sacrificed so much for me and it made me read a lot about what the Bible says about heaven. And the Bible actually says a lot about heaven and how there's actually gonna place where there are no more new scars because there's not any pain. Think about that. In the last book of the Bible, it's called Revelation, God says this about heaven. He will remove all of their sorrows. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow or crying or pain for the old world and its evils are gone. Let me wrap up and I wanna say this. Pain's not easy. It's not simple, and everybody's pain is a little bit different. I don't wanna leave you with the impression that a short message at HSM is gonna solve any pain that you're feeling. That's not true. 
But God can and God will walk with you through your pain if you let him. But he's not going to bust his way in. He wants to be invited into it. Now, it feels like the best way to end this video, and I want to have these words stay on the screen for just a minute so you can kind of soak them in. Before you read them, let me just say this. We really do love you, and we really are rooting for you. I am, Eastside is, the leaders of your house group are, but I want to leave you with these words from Matthew. Uh, and these are words that he wrote down after he walked around on the earth with Jesus. And this is the words. It says, he will not crush those who are weak, talking about God, he will not quench the smallest hope until he brings full justice with his final victory. And his name will be the hope of all the world. One day pain is going to be gone. But in the meantime, we've got scars. And we've got to reach out to people. We've got to not isolate. We've got to invite God into that. And right now is a moment where you can invest in your small group and do that. You guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Please jump into your small group and have a great conversation. We love you and we'll see you next week.